I actually think the word hope should be reserved for a non-naive expectation of good for the future. There's this um, spectrum of words, I think, from like fantasy to optimism to wish to hope. <laughs> And clearly one end of the spectrum is naive and foolish. Uh, we can't live in a world of fantasy. And I would actually say optimism, the idea that just everything's gonna turn out for the best is a kind of fantasy. And we can wonder if all expectation of good is actually falls kind of in the category of wish. I, I wish it would be true, but I don't know that it will be true. Um, I actually think the word hope should be reserved for a non-naive expectation of good for the future. Is there any reason to have that? Like, is there reason, any reason to have a non-naive, a, a seriously considered expectation um, of good ahead of us um, in, in the story of our life and the story of the world? This is actually um, maybe one of the few questions I, I honestly do not know how to answer except as a Christian. Uh, or maybe more precisely as a person kind of animated by and informed by the biblical story. Because the two parts of the Christian Bible, what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Hebrew Bible and the Christian um, New Testament, hinge on two events that if you believe they happened, there is every reason for expectation of good. And if you come to the conclusion they did not happen, I cannot give you a reason for hope. <laughs> and they are the exodus of Israel from Egypt and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The essential Christian belief of God is that the way to talk about God in a Christian way is as the one who brought Israel out of Egypt and raised Jesus from the dead. And it's very interesting that these two anchor events of these two testaments of the Bible map onto, I think, the two deepest causes of despair which is systems of oppression. The Hebrew people are enslaved by a vast, incredibly powerful, seemingly uh, uh, undefeatable empire, Pharaoh and ancient Egypt. And, and then the reality of death, uh, that death awaits every creature and every one of us. And if there is no liberation from oppression, which, is, which really could stand for all the ways that humans collaborate to frustrate the potential of creation and one another, <laughs> covers a lot of ground and seems just intractably powerful at many moments in human history, including our own. And if there is no hope that on the other side of death is life, then I don't see why you have any ground to be a particularly having a particular <laughs> expectation of good. Except that I believe there are actually really powerful reasons to believe both of these things actually happened because it is really hard to account for the survival of the people we call Israel or the Jewish people all the way through all of history when every other people like them that was conquered by empires like Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Rome disappeared and was assimilated and are only found in archeological records. And this is a living people who for thousands of years, every spring keep the Passover and tell this story like, where did that come from? If not something like the Exodus that's recorded in, in the book of Exodus. And there's a whole set of reasons to believe that as much as no one expected at the time and everyone at the time and everyone today knows dead people don't rise from the dead, that Jesus did rise from the dead. And if those two things happened, it turns everything upside down. And there's every reason to expect that no matter how dark and difficult the circumstances we face, that there is a God active in our story and the world's story who can bring something good um, even out of the worst. Uh, and that is a very, very powerful, non-naive ground for hope.